What's up guys, Justin here with the Rhino Essentials. So in today's video, we're gonna check out a tool that allows us to twist objects in Rhino. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so let's say we had an object like this one. This is just an extruded rectangle. And let's say we wanted to give it a twist along the Y axis. Well, what we can do is we can go into the transform functions and there's actually a tool in here designed to do exactly that called the twist function. And so what it's gonna allow us to do is it's gonna allow us to activate the twist tool. It's gonna ask us what objects we want to twist. In this case, we're just gonna select the singular object and hit the enter key. When we do that, it's now gonna ask us where we want to start the twist. At the moment, I'm just gonna select this point right here and then I'm gonna move my mouse down and I'm gonna select this point right here in order to set the end of the twist axis. This will get more important in a minute. But for now, what we wanna do is we wanna click and then it's gonna ask us to set our angle or our first reference point. So in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and um, go to my four window view and I'm just going to move my mouse out. I'm gonna click and then I can move my mouse again in order to set my twist. So let's say we wanted this to do a 360 degree twist. I'm just gonna type in a value of 360 and hit the inner key. And so notice what that does is that takes that bar that we had in here and it twists it like this. So the first thing you might notice is this isn't a very uniform twist. We can fix that by using our snapping a little bit more effectively. So what we're gonna do is we're going to select this tool like this, and this time we're gonna use the smart track function. What the smart track function is going to do is, and you wanna make sure that you have your object snapping turned on as well, but that's gonna allow us to mouse over a point right here, mouse over a point right here, and then that'll give us the inference point between those, um, the middle point right here. So we can use that to find the midpoint of an object really easily. And so then we can do the same thing that we did before. Now, a couple things about the options here. So first off, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tap the C key on my keyboard and hit enter. What that's gonna do is that's gonna put this in copy mode. Notice how that did that right here. Now, this is going to create a copy of my object rather than adjusting the object itself. So, and then I can type in a value of 360 degrees, hit the enter key, and now we can take a look at what we've created. So I'm gonna move this off to the side. Notice how this gave us a 360 degree rotation around the central point of this object right here. And so not only can we do this with an individual object, we can also do this with multiple objects. So let's say I have three tubes like this. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna activate the twist tool and in the beginning, notice how I can select multiple different objects like this. So now I've got these objects in here. I can go ahead and hit the inner key when I'm done. Now I'm just gonna set the start of my twist axis and the end of my twist axis like this. But notice how this is going to affect all three objects. So then we'll just do the same thing, but this time we'll give it maybe like a 270 degree rotation. So we'll do a 270, we'll hit the enter key, and notice what that did is that created three copies in here. We'll go ahead and select those and move them out of the way, but notice how you can use this in order to quickly add a twist to like wires or cables or something like that. So you can use this to twist multiple objects in addition, there's also a couple other functions that I wanna look at real quick. So first off, let's activate the twist tool and we're gonna give it a start of twist axis. And just for this example, I'm just gonna go off the top here because it's gonna be a little bit easier. But now remember that we have been setting our twist axis to be all the way along this object, right? However, let's say that we don't want that. What we can do instead is we could set this to maybe like half of our object right here. And so what we've done right here is we've set our axis to be along half of our object. Well, what that means is that means if I click and then move my mouse, and let's say I wanted to twist this 180 degrees and hit the inner key, that's gonna create a twist, but it's only going to create a twist up to the point at which I set this axis. So you can use this in order to bend part of an object or twist part of an object instead of a full object. However, if you were to do the same thing, like this, we'll activate twist again. But this time, if I activate this infinite function right here, what that means is that means that that's going to go all the way infinitely along this axis, meaning anything in the object will get twisted. So now if I type in 270 and hit the enter key, notice how it's going to twist 
the whole thing instead of just part of it. That means that you can set this so that you don't have to have your axis all the way along the object in order for this to bend the whole thing. And again, this looks a little bit funky because I didn't start it from the center of the object, I started it from the top of the object. It's basically gonna work the same way if you set this on the middle point right here. And so notice how this is also going to work on more complex objects. So let's say I have an object like this one, which is just an extruded star with a scale on the end of it, but we could select the twist function in order to twist it. So we're just gonna select this object. Then we can select the object and give it a twist like this. So let's say I did 180. It's going to twist this object it's like this. And then one other thing is you might start combining these together eventually. So let's say for example that we wanted to give this a twist, but then we also wanted it to follow along a curve. Well, what you could do is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add a twist first. So we're gonna add a twist on the end like this. So you could use this to create a twisted bar, but then you could use the bend function in order to take this object so you could use it in order to bend an object like this along like 180 or 360 degrees like this. All right, so let me know if you have any questions about the twist tool in the comments down below. I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.